Neville Goddard, May 2nd, 1969. You are a cosmic being. Read by Josiah Brandt. Tonight, I want you to think of Christ as a cosmic being who contains everyone within him. Having died for all, this one being is in all and will rise in all. Only one being can rise, for only one being fell. Having deliberately destroyed his temple in the fall, God, this one being, is rebuilding his temple out of the redeemed, in order for it to become something far greater than it was prior to its destruction. One being, containing all within him, fell into this world of death, to become individualized as you, as me. That same being will rise in us all, individually. And when he does, the divine name, Lord, will be conferred upon the individual in whom he rose. In Paul's wonderful letter to the Corinthians, he tells us, From now on, I regard no one from the human point of view. Even though I once regarded Christ from a human point of view, I regard him thus no longer. Why? Because Paul was led from tradition to self-discovery. While determined to destroy those who believed in a Savior other than the one he was taught to believe in, Paul discovered that, if, that the Christ of whom they spoke was a pattern of salvation contained within every child born of woman. It was Paul who said, When it pleased God to reveal himself in me, I conferred not with flesh and blood. The pattern unfolds in only one way, and Paul tried to describe how it unfolded in him. I cannot find the true detail by his description of it, but Paul does tell us to imitate God as dear children. Now, in order to imitate anyone or anything, it must be seen or heard first. How can you imitate something you cannot see or hear? It is my purpose to tell you how to imitate God as a dear child. For imitation can only be accomplished by hearing what took place and believing it. Now, the question is asked, how can man imitate him whom they have never heard? And how can men hear unless there is a preacher? And how can there be a preacher unless he is sent? Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by preaching Christ. If, when I tell you I came out of the Father, you will accept my words and believe I am telling the truth, then you will set your hope fully upon this promise and its unfoldment in you. I tell you, one being fell to become all, and one being is going to rise in all, as each is called according to his purpose. I was called in 1959. He may call you tonight, but each one of us will be called individually by the same being who is rising in all. I cannot conceive of anything comparable to this. For unless we are born from above, we remain in the world of death, turning the wheel of recurrence over and over again. I can assure you, from what I know from my inner vision, that everyone will escape. God will not leave one section of himself in the world of death. He is the one being who, containing all, fell into the world of death. And that same being, rising in each, individually according to his purpose, rebuilds his temple out of the redeemed. If you would imitate God as a dear child, you must first have a pattern from which you may follow. This is true in all walks of life. There must be a mold into which molten metal is poured in order to form a casting. Jesus Christ is the mold which must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. 
Perfection is a molten state into which you must be reduced. Your physical body, when it is burned, is reduced to dust. So it cannot be this body that is reduced to a molten state. No, it is not your physical body, but your spiritual body. Christianity is based upon the claim that a certain series of events happened in which God revealed himself in action for the salvation of man. It hasn't a thing to do with any individual man on the outside. Paul's story, which preceded the Gospels by 20 or 25 years, is not concerned with what happens to the individual between the cradle and the grave. If the one called Jesus was a carpenter, a mason, a bricklayer, or a pimp, it would not concern Paul. He was only interested in what happened in an individual. Paul knew he had awakened from the dream of life, but could not share his experiences with others except in words. We are told that he spent his last days from morning to night discussing the kingdom of God, and trying to persuade others concerning Jesus. And some believed while others disbelieved. This is true in this world in which we live. When I tell of what happened to me, individually, my experiences are so unusual, the average person will not accept them. They, still in the world of Caesar, are more concerned with how to make that extra dollar than they are in the eternal world of life. Although this world of death is temporal, it will continue as though it is forever until the individual hears the word of God and responds with faith by setting his hope fully upon the grace that is coming to him at the revelation of Jesus Christ within him. That is where the one being containing all of us fell. It was a deliberate act and necessary in order to expand beyond what he was prior to the full. We did nothing wrong to warrant our fall. Rather, we desired to enter this world of death. We agreed to take upon ourselves these dead garments, to be enslaved by them, and to overcome them. We did it in perfect confidence that he who contained us all would redeem us all. In the 32nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, we are told that he has set bounds to the people according to the number of the sons of God. Therefore, every child is a garment worn by a son of God, and God will not leave one of his sons into this world of death. Rather, every son will rise individually to the revelation that he is God the Father, as it takes all of us to form that one being who is God and Father of all. When I speak of Jesus Christ, I do not mean a man, but a pattern. Like Paul, I no longer regard Christ from the human point of view. I once regarded him as such, but not anymore. Now I see him as a pattern of salvation, which began to unfold in me back in 1959, when I awoke in my skull. Until that moment of time, I, like you, had no idea I was buried there. But because it happened to me, I will now prophesy for you. A storm wind will possess you. And you will awaken within yourself to discover you are entombed in your skull, from which you will emerge. That will be your birth from above, of which John speaks, saying, Unless you are born from above, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. This kingdom is the new age, spoken of as that age, as opposed to this age. This is the age of death, where everything begins and ends, while that age is eternal life. Having overcome the world of death, Jesus Christ, the pattern, 
unfolds as you arise, victorious, into the world of eternal life. For you are the gods who came down, individualized yourselves, in order to rise as the Lord, as there is no other being. The world may condemn you if you are a thief by profession, but Paul doesn't. It matters little what happens to you individually between the cradle and the grave. But it matters much if, when you hear my story of salvation, you believe it. For then you will break the shell and rise above all this worldly nonsense. Salvation's story was told to us as it was to them. But it did not benefit them because, believing this world of death was real, they were more interested in achieving greater intellect and more wealth here. Therefore, the story was not received with faith. I read a story concerning Lord Russell, who, although loving to be called Lord, said, I regard religion as a disease born of fear, a source of untold misery to the human race. Well, I tell you, it is not a disease, although I know there are numberless forms of interpretation of the great mystery. Like Paul, I was taught that Christ was a man who came into the world and claimed he was the Messiah to save the world. But I tell you, Christianity is based upon the claim that a certain series of supernatural events happened in which God revealed himself in action for the salvation of man. When I realized that these events spelled out the pattern man, who was Christ, I knew there was no other. It takes the many blows of the world to reduce us to that liquid, cosmic being who awakens in the grave. That grave is not in some cemetery, but in the skull from which a storm wind will awaken you. In the Jerusalem Talmud, there is a tradition that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem the night of the destruction of Jerusalem and he was carried off by a storm wind. I tell you, this is true. When the storm wind possessed me, I reverberated from head to foot. I felt as though my body was being shattered as I awoke. Expecting to see the same room I had retired in, I awoke to find myself in a tomb, which I intuitively knew to be my skull. It was sealed, and when I rolled a stone away, I discovered that I could force my head into the opening found there. This I did, and I came out of that skull as a child comes out of the womb of a woman. But this was the womb from above rather than the womb from below, for you must be born from above in order to inherit the kingdom of God. Then the entire imagery as told us in scripture surrounded me, witnessing the event. It is written that the angel of the Lord said to those who were going to be witnesses, Go, and you will find him, for God is born this day in Bethlehem. Look for this sign, which is a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying on the floor. The witnesses went hastily and found the sign, but they could not see he who was having the experience because he was in spirit. And since God is spirit, it was God who was born. Although I could not be seen by mortal eye, my witnesses could not see me, but I could see them, and their every thought was objective to me. Then the sign of my birth was carried away by a storm wind. Now, knowing myself to be God, who is a father, I must have a son to bear witness to my fatherhood. Five months later, God's son David stood before me and called me father, and I fulfilled his promise. Then I returned to the limitation of my cross in order to share my experiences with you, my brothers, to encourage you to believe. 
I saw my only son, who is God's only son. That son is the personification of all the generations of men and their experiences, proving that the race is finished and the crown of righteousness is mine. I have played every lovely and unlovely part in this world. I had to in order to see my son, whose beauty is beyond measure and whose name is David. Now, the third mighty act reveals your true identity as that of molten gold. In the book of Zechariah, we read, He stood upon the Mount of Olives when it was split from east to west as one half moved northward and the other half moved southward. You will discover, as I did, that the Mount of Olives spoken here is your body. For the Old Testament is an adumbration, a forecasting, in a not altogether conclusive and immediately evident way. It is a shadow, but not the substance. Zechariah refers to a mountain, but when it happens to you, you will realize that the mountain is yourself. It is your body, which is split from top to bottom, from east to west, as one side moves northward and the other side moves southward, revealing liquid, molten gold at its base. As I looked at this living, liquid gold, I knew it to be myself, and I fused with it, and up I went into my skull, into the kingdom of heaven, for the kingdom is within. At that moment, I departed the world of generation and returned to the world of regeneration as the heavens reverberated like thunder. Having returned to the molten state, I cast myself into the mold, which was prepared for me before that the world was, to become the living image that radiates and reflects God's glory. I am now the express image of God himself. God's primal wish was, let us make man in our image. I tell you, he has wrought it. As one of the gods, I have completed the journey. But because we are all brothers, I am compelled to remain in the world to tell you in the hope that you who are still asleep will believe me. I say the Christ of Scripture is a pattern of salvation and not a man separate from yourself. The four mighty acts which form that redemption begin with your awakening within yourself and end with the descent of the dove. Two years and nine months after my ascent into the kingdom of heaven, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in bodily form as a dove and smothered me with love. Then I knew I had fulfilled the entire role and was now a glorious living stone in the living body of the risen Christ. Christ is the one being who fell, containing all within himself. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Because he could not fall without all of us, we agreed to fall with him. That was an agreement for expansion, for truth is an ever-expanding illumination. God, having reached the limit of contraction and opacity, died in order to rise into limitless expansion and translucency. Opacity, which is doubt, is personified as a thing and called the devil, And this being called man is the limit of contraction. Again, opacity, which is doubt, is personified as a thing and called the devil. And this being called man is the limit of contraction. It may be hard to believe, but as Paul said after his revelation, the wisdom of this world is foolish in the eyes of God 
and the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Man believes he is getting wiser and wiser, yet it is only wiser and wiser nonsense. But God allows the nonsense to go on as men give each other medals, knowing after the revelation man, knowing that after the revelation man will know that the Bible is not speaking of a Messiah to come from without, but from within. One man fell, saying, I say you are gods, sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you will fall like men and die as one man, O princes. Can you imagine that? Falling as one man, we are princes. And if that is true, then our father is a king. I tell you, our father is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. For he is the Lord God Jehovah, who is raising us to himself, that each one of us may become fully aware of being the father. Regardless of your present sex, you are a son of God, destined to awaken as the Father. This wonderful story of Scripture is completely misunderstood. Today's preachers are not sent, for they have not yet been awakened. Therefore, they will give you all kinds of stories concerning the interpretation of Scripture. Prior to 1959, I was not sent, but in 1959, I was called, incorporated into the body of God and sent. This incorporation is like an impression made by a seal on wax or clay, for I came out bearing the image of God. The mortal eye cannot see that image, and when I die here, my physical body will disintegrate like all bodies do. My friends will say I am dead, for to them I am a mortal being with weaknesses and limitations of the flesh. Those who see me as Neville are misled, for they cannot hear what I am saying, for they are seeing a body disintegrating before their eyes. They are judging by appearances and cannot understand that God does not see as man sees. Man sees the outward man, while God sees the inner man. And I, the inner man, have been impressed upon God like a great seal upon wax. I wear this little body that continues to decay, yet I, unseen by mortal eye, am radiating and reflecting the glory of God. I am the express image of the person that is God, but only those whose eyes are open will see me. I promise you who hear me tonight that it won't be long before you will depart this world. Don't be afraid. You will be restored to life in a world just like this to continue your journey. If you believe what you have heard from me, although I will not be there, wherever you go, they will talk of the work I did here. Individually, I have left the world of death. I am only waiting for the moment when this little garment is taken off for the last time. I will not be restored to a world of mortality like this anymore, for I have finished the race. I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. Now there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, where I go to wait for all my brothers to come into that union and be the one being that came down bearing all. Mark my words, I am not fooling you. It isn't long to wait before you will take off this garment and find yourself restored to life. You will meet many of your friends there who went before you. It will be a world just like this, where you will do all of the things we do here, and you will remember who taught you. You will not see me there, but eventually you will see me. Now I am going to where you cannot come, but you will, 
for everyone will awaken as God the Father. I am not trying to persuade you to change your attitude towards the speaker. I am only telling you what I know from experience. Like Paul, I did not receive this knowledge from a man. It came through revelation of the true nature of salvation. It's something entirely different. Salvation is not a man, but a pattern man, buried in all, who will awaken in all in a first person Singular, present tense experience. When the experience is yours, you too will know who you are. I was taught to believe that God was another. But when the pattern awakened in me, I knew I was He. Now, I remain in the world only to share this wisdom with my brothers. The unknown author of the book of Hebrews said, Holy brethren, look to Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession. We are all sharers in this great gift, so let us now look to Jesus, the apostle who is called and sent. It is Jesus who is called, that who you really are. As the apostle, you are called and sent to tell the story of salvation from experience. You will tell your good news, knowing that not everyone who hears it will respond. In fact, many, being more interested in the honors of men, will discount it. Those who have $50 million are only interested in increasing their wealth to $100 million. And... Although they may be 80 when they hear your story, it will not interest them, as they will still want more of what they must leave behind when they depart this world, as they won't be able to take it with them, as you know. They will make a world like this, only devoid of what they had built up here, and cast themselves in a role best suited for the work yet to be done in them by the Son of God who is wearing that garment. He may zap him from the role of a millionaire, and place him in the role of a shoeshine boy, or one who cleans latrines, if that is necessary for the work yet to be done in him. The world into which they go is just as real as this. I know this is true from experience. I have sat in a chair and felt something happen within me, and I see a world that is solidly real. As my consciousness follows vision... I step into that world and it closes upon me as this world is shut out. While in that world, my body is real. It is seen and heard by others. If in that world I have a body like this, yet those who are here see my body asleep in a chair, how did I get that body? It was just as real to me and to those who saw and heard me there as this body you now see here. You could destroy this body, but you would not have destroyed that body in that world. William Blake once said, The oak is cut down with the axe, and the lamb is slain by the knife. But their forms eternal remain forever, and are reproduced by the seed of contemplative thought. When I stepped into that world, I knew myself to be a man called Neville. I was so aware of being Neville, I clothed myself in the body that was Neville, yet I knew there was a body that was Neville sound asleep on a chair. How did this happen? By the seed of contemplative thought. When you die here, you remold yourself in the likeness that you know, only you reduce it in age to a time that pleases you. An 80-year-old man, knowing what he knows now, will wear a twenty-year-old body, produced by the seed of contemplative thought. Who does it? The God in him. He will not go through the womb of a woman, but will create a new body by the seed of contemplative thought. He goes on in that world just as he does here, 
to die there and begin all over again until he hears the story of salvation and believes. Now, let us go into the silence. Read by Josiah Brandt. Like and subscribe to this channel for updates when I post more Neville Goddard videos.